Okay, one last time. Today is the day before our event, and we're going to try to review a few high points and low points, probably, of our ancestry. So we got all three siblings here, um, Craig, Brant, and Ellen. This first thing is a picture from uh, Ancestry DNA. Um, this shows you that we're pretty much from England, Wales, Scotland, and Ireland. <laughs> uh, there's no outliers there. So basically, that's that's our ancestry. Um, and so we're going to go and pick a few people to pick on and see which of my siblings can identify these people. Oh, dear. So it's kind of a game, I guess. I'm just coming up with this as we go. Um, let me put that away. I know that. <laughs> Okay, we're going to start with the easy ones. Who's that? That's Dad's dad. Right. Francis. Okay, you are correct. You win the prize. I don't know what the prize is yet, but we'll figure out something. There's no prize. Maybe you get some of Oh, an applause. <laughs> <laughs> so on the tree, that's where Francis Williamson is, and that's Dad's dad. Dad talked about him as being a guy who wouldn't hurt a fly and had no bad bone in his body. He was a very nice guy is the way he, he an insurance, an insurance salesman. That's right. Yeah. But, um, we didn't, we didn't get a whole lot more information about him. Yeah. I, I don't know a whole lot more about him, but, um, but then you go to his, well, I'm not going to, I'm not going to tell you who these people are. Who's that? Good boy. I don't know. I have no idea. That is Dad's grandfather. What? Where'd you get that picture from? See, uh, Victor Pearly Hoyt. Oh, Mom's side. No, wait. No, this is Dad's, dad's side. side. This is Dad's dad. Hmm. And this is the connection that you have to Newfoundland because Victor Pearly Hoyt married Edith Husson oh, or Husson. 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 Yeah. Who Craig met their offspring, a granddaughter, I guess, up in Maine a few years back, and they actually connected through us through Ancestry.com. Mm. So anyway, so that's that guy. I don't know. I don't have a lot of information about him either. Mm. I think he did not. He didn't actually. He's got a uniform on, but he didn't actually stay in the Army at all. He was actually in military school, I believe. Do you know how he ended up in Newfoundland? I have no idea. No, it would be nice mm. to know that. I wonder if we can figure that out. Mm. So, and then uh, beyond that, this is the next guy we're going to look at. Anybody have any ideas? You might know, because they're actually the name is on there. <laughs> it's hard to read. Is that the banker? Joseph Hoyt. Oh, Joseph Hoyt. Ellen got it. So, I read this, it. this guy, hold on. Okay, so if I pull down here and we look at the tree, then mm. this is the dad of... Victor Pearly Hoyt. This is Joseph Morell Hoyt. Wow. Now his claim to fame, and this is the only thing I know about him, is that he, uh, during the gold rush in the late 1870s, he and somebody else, I don't know if it was a family member or just a friend, they he was single at the time and he decided he was going to go participate in the gold rush. So hmm. rather than going over cross country, he took this route. Oh my God. Took a God. ship. That went around the Cape uh, Cape Horn would be 1849, wouldn't it? 1850. Yeah, right. Uh, that's, you, yeah, said, you, you said 1870s, but yeah, I guess it would be 1849. Wow, it went around Cape Horn into San Francisco, and and apparently this was the quicker of the two ways to do it. Mm. Uh, going overland took a lot more time, and probably this was something for privileged people to take the the ship around well, instead. I don't. I'm assuming, but if you didn't sink, yeah, <laughs> I mean that's gnarly down there, right? But he didn't make any money on gold at all. He made a ton of money selling people supplies. Ah. Smart. Or going looking for gold. So good idea. So that's him. And then his well, no, let me let me get into this one. Who's that? That's Victor. Victor who? De Baker. Victor De Baker. Ellen, you there? Uh oh, did we lose Ellen? Yeah, I'm here. Oh, okay. Can yeah, you see I'm that? Here. Yeah, so that's the ship that Victor De Baker um, 
piloted or, or captained, I guess. And um, that's the, what is it, Shushan? The Sushan. Sushan. Um, apparently running rum uh, and some other commodities across the Atlantic Ocean. That's what the, that's what the history book says. I know. Okay. So the, the, probably the important piece of information here is that there was a point where he was on a, on a boat that was burning. Mm. And he had to take a life-threatening leap Three, a burning. Three, three of them. Three what? Three crewmen made it. Oh, I didn't know that. You tell the story. Huh. So the, 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 the ship was on fire, and, a, and a, another ship came by. And three, including Victor, jumped as the ship made one pass and um, jumped on the other ship and survived. And hence, we were all born. Yeah, actually, we all jumped that jump, too. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> Thank God, because we wouldn't be here if, that, if we hadn't. Um, so that's Dad's side. Uh, there's some other Williamsons and, and people that I don't know a whole lot about, um, to be honest. Uh, so we're just going to try. Some people don't like this stuff too much, so we're not going to dwell on it too much. Uh, but um, we'll, we'll kind of move on to uh, Mom's side. Hmm. So Mom. Who's that? Mame! <laughs> That is me. That is me. Eleanor oh, Ramsey is... Walton. Well, that, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Walton Newman. Newman, Newman, I Newman. Think was her first name. Yeah. Eleanor um, Newman was her uh, birth name. Right. And we'll get into that in a minute. But uh, she married this fella here. And that uh, is Car Craig. Car Craig, what? Car Craig. Ramsey. Car Craig. Who died a young at a young age? Uh, he, age forty one, I think. Yeah, somewhere in there. Um, had some kind of heart condition, right? Uh, he had rheumatic fever, right? Too. And probably had some kind of arrhythmia at some point. Mm -hmm. um, so those are those two. You guys know those. So let's pick another one from that side. Oh, oh here's another picture of Maine. That's a little bit younger. So. Just That's, so that you don't think that this guy is robbing, or that she's robbing the cradle no. at this age. I think I think that's Mame on one of her um, cruise on her, ships. On a cruise ship. Yeah, I think you're right. She was the um, the social. Yeah, like on Love Boat. Right. I forget that girl's name, but what do you call a person on a Love Boat? It was Queen Mary, wasn't it? I don't I, remember what I boat she was on. I think it might have been the Queen Mary. Actually, yeah. it might have been. I don't know. I can't say that for sure. Yeah. Um, oh, I didn't mention this. I should mention this. So this is Dad's mom. Donna. She is Donna. Uh, no, no, Doris. 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 Doris uh, oh, she did all that hard work. Yeah. yeah, Doris. She was an artist. Pearl Hoyt, hmm. and married Williamson. Hmm. Right. She's uh, actually some of these pictures of her very as, as a young person. It's funny because we remember her when she's ancient. But as a young woman, she was really good looking. <laughs> she was. <laughs> you don't think she's good looking? You just kind of creeped me out. Of <laughs> we don't have a picture of Mame's dad, mm. who was Harold Hastings Newman. 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 I'm sorry. Um, he was a doctor. He practically um, trained out of. Um, he was Daddy Doc. Yeah, yeah, he was Daddy Doc. And he was a, a doctor. He actually, he was born in Woodstock near me um, in the house that many of the Newmans grew up and lived in, which was part of a uh, iron foundry um, right on the uh, in Shenandoah Valley. And he at some point moved from there down to um, uh, North, North Carolina. Mm. Yeah, what's the name of this? Salisbury. Salisbury, North Carolina, where he actually um, was a baseball enthusiast and apparently was pretty good at baseball. So down in uh, Salisbury, there's a college, uh, a stadium that's named after Harold Newman. Yeah. yeah. I'll show you the, I'll show you the, the article. Um, but he was pretty good. He was pretty good at baseball. Um, so he had his, his father. Uh, actually, let me show you these folks. Who's that? You'll remember this name, I think. I don't know. I don't think that's his name on the bottom. I'm not sure what that is. I don't know who that is. 
That's Edgar Edgar Douglas Newman. I don't know. So he's a judge. He lived in Woodstock, Woodstock, Virginia. It's in the Shenandoah Valley near Winchester. Mm. And he was a judge. He was a banker. He was a um, he gave a lot of money to the uh, private school that's in the area. Uh, so he's Mames area. what? Mames grandfather. Mames grandfather. Yeah, yeah. But he has a very prominent guy in that area. Um, so Harold Hastings Newman. And then above that is Edgar Douglas Newman. Hmm. Mary Ott Walton. That Walton is from. And then, so, Victor, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Douglas, um, Edgar Douglas, his father was Benjamin Newman. Hmm. Uh, he was the one who kind of got the foundry up and going. And I believe... In Woodstock. In Woodstock, yeah. And the guy, the kind of figurehead of the family... Was this and I think that that looks like Maine. <laughs> yeah, I'm so being wait, totally honest. So wait, who is that? That's Walter Newman. That's Maine's. So I'll show you. That is Walter Newman. He mm-hmm. had met with Pennybacker, who also Pennybacker was also uh, somebody that was involved with uh, the business, and they had Benjamin P. Newman. Hmm as a child, and then Benjamin P. had, so this would be a great, 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 great grandfather. Okay. And that's as far as I go back. I don't, I don't know a whole lot more. Oh, actually, I do know this. So the Newmans, as opposed to the other side of, um, of um, Mom side. uh, Mom's side, the Newmans came across in the 1600s as indentured servants. Really? So they had to go through the seven years of toil and then after seven years, just given some land that they then... Yeah. Where did they land? In Virginia? Somewhere in Virginia, yeah. Hmm. yeah. Um, but a lot of people at that time frame died during that seven years. So it's pretty... Hmm. They were seasoned. This, this family was seasoned. They kind of made it through. and, and uh, hmm. you know, it's, a, it's a big deal because they they came from nothing and became something. Wow. So that's the, that's the main side of things. Um, we will go back... Well, wait. What? I want to hear LLB and uh, yeah, we're going that John Ramsey. That's, that's not that's not the main side. Oh, uh, it's the Ramsey side. I mean, it's Ramsey. Oh, right, 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 right. Okay. So we'll go back. We'll go back. Coming back down to these two. So there's a number of people in this generation that were pretty notable. Um, let's hmm. talk about this guy first. Mm. Who's that? That's John. What's his name? Andrew, Andrew Ramsey. Yeah, and artillery. There's... Artillery. I don't know what's that rank. What was it rank? A... There's people in the room who are visiting from. They would know Raleigh better, who much know better, this, better much than we. Better than... But he fought. So, he fought. At... Please apo- uh, we apologize if we're. <laughs> yes, if we're <laughs> mutilating this. But but he was an artillery commander at Little Round Top, shooting at. Joshua Chamberlain. Am I wrong? I don't think so. No? Little Round Top? Yeah. Uh, maybe they know about that. I don't know. I know when he was at um, Antietam, and he was oh. the one who handed the, the spyglass. But which, was he not at Gettysburg also? Um, he probably was. So maybe maybe you're correct. I don't know. Hmm. I think we'll have to get well, somebody from the crowd to, to it, well, point us in the right direction. I bet John Ramsey at this point in the presentation will stand up and correct us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Because he has the he has the no, spyglass spy and the and the cutlass, doesn't he? Well, let's let's talk about the spyglass for a minute because it kind of relates to um, the next guy that I'm going to bring up. So uh, Lee, a couple of days before Antietam battle occurred, he fell off his horse and fell onto his hands and really messed them up. Hmm. So he wasn't able to use his hands very hmm. effectively. So he wanted to see what the troops were that were approaching from the south in the later part of the day mm. at Antietam because there was a large group of people that were approaching from the south and he couldn't tell whether they were south or north. Mm. So he asked this young lieutenant, John Andrew Ramsey, to, lieutenant. To, to give him uh, to let him use his um, his spyglass. Spy so through the spyglass, he's able to see that the troops are in fact, although they were all dressed in Union clothes. <laughs> He was able to see that they were, in fact, Confederate troops coming up from the south. And what they had done was they had come from Harper's Ferry, where they had uh, captured Harper's the clothes? Ferry. Yeah, they stole the clothes. Really? Because they didn't have any clothes. 
Oh my god. And there's uh, but anyway, they're they're wearing union uniforms, but they are actually Well, how could he tell? Uh I think they probably had flags that showed oh, who they were. Hmm. But so the person who was part of that crowd that's coming up to the south is this fellow here. And who's that? L.O.B. Yeah, Lawrence O'Brien Branch. So Lawrence O'Brien Branch. Political general. Uh, correct. He's a political general. Just a minute. Um, he had been um, active in Congress uh, as a North Carolina representative. And actually, before the war started, he was offered the treasury, uh, hmm. the treasurer role by uh, what's his name? Breckenridge? No, no not Breckenridge. Oh, I'm forgetting. The, the president uh, who was losing control of things uh, offered him the, the treasurer's position. Um, but he declined because he knew at that point that he was going to not be with the United States. So this is where he stands in the whole lineup. Uh, so Lawrence O'Brien Branch, his kid, Josephine Branch, mm. is the first of, I think, five Josephines mm. that now follow that branch of his family, and those Josephines might be here tonight with us. Um, oh, Joe? Yeah. yeah. Oh, Joe Adamson. Joe Adamson. And, and actually, Joe... Go, Joe! Joe has another kid whose name is Joe, too. So, mm. so um... Wow, that's how crazy. That's how we're connected through... That's how we... So, Joe we're like cousins of Joe, Joe like, yeah. several times removed, but right. still Joe. Right. So, Josephine Branch married Carl Craig. Mm. And Clark Craig, I, I don't know the history about that. Um, I think again, there's people that say this a lot better than than I. Uh, but he was, I think, also politically inclined, and um, uh, I don't know a whole lot more. Where is Burton Craig? In this? Burton Craig is the father of Clark Craig. He's right here, okay. and we have a picture of Burton Craig too. Very, very, he looks Irish to me. Mm. <laughs> he's not Irish. He's Scottish. But the so this guy, who is so that? This, he's the uncle, uncle of L.O.B. Because L.O.B.'s father died when he was very young. I think he was seven or something when he died. Mm. So his uncle took and over took guardianship in. of L.O.B. Mm. And L.O.B. brought was brought up mostly. He was in D.C at a school where he went to school um, as, a, as a child with um, Dr. Sam, what's his name? Sam and Chase? Yes, yes, Sam and Chase. Hmm. Uh, they were in school together, Secretary actually. Secretary of State. Uh, so, yeah, no, so this guy, um, his name what? is... Who is John? I've never seen this guy's picture. Uh, let me see if I can find it. So his dad is Joseph, and I think this is John, John Branch. Hmm. And John Branch was the Secretary of the Navy um, in the early 1800s. Oh, my gosh. And it just so happens that the guy who started my fraternity was hung on a ship during the time, I believe, when he was the Secretary of the Navy. Damn. <laughs> For mutiny. <laughs> well, he probably deserved it. Yeah, I'm sure he did. <laughs> so, um, Wow. So the Brandt family goes back to 1600s, and he, unlike Newman, came across as a gentleman. Um, mm. He already had made his way and came across with his wife, mm. and he brought a couple, I think, two uh, with him. And the way that works back then is if you brought more people with you, you were given more land once, mm. you, once you got here. Mm. So he got... Um, when would that be? Uh, 1630, I think it was oh, somewhere early, there. early. Yeah, not it wasn't uh, Jamestown, but I mean mm. it was around the Jamestown area, mm. but it wasn't that first wave, 1617, mm. whatever. Mm. But um, or 1609, I forget. But uh, so he was given um, uh, a uh, large plot of land called Kingland that's just down uh, stream from Richmond. Mm. And cool thing is that you can still go and walk on this property. Really? Because it's owned by the electric company. Did you go there? <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. Um, mm. 
So anyway, uh, that's as much as we know about. Actually, uh, you can go further back with him. I mean, the guy, um, we know something about his history back in Europe, uh, ancestors before him, but I don't, I don't know a whole lot about him. Hmm. Uh, I before him. Huh. And I think that's it. Can you tell uh, your story? Because you've studied a little bit about L.O.B. Can you tell the story about what happened to L.O.B. at Antietam? Um, you mean that he got killed? Yeah. So, yeah. So they came from Harper's Ferry, Stonewall Jackson's So this guy was brigade, under, right? no, he was under A.P. Hill. A.P. Hill. A.P. Right. Hill had five general, uh, br uh, brigadier generals b beneath him. And L.O.B. Branch was one of them. And L.O.B., um, I don't want to offend anybody here, but when he got into this mess, he was a political guy. He, um, as I said, was a, uh, a member of Congress, uh, United States Congress, as a representative. From North Carolina. From North Carolina. He had also run a railroad um, mm. in, the, in the years before the war. Um, so he, I think he was fairly wealthy, too. He was mm. a slave owner. Mm. Um, and... He almost got into a duel before mm. uh, the war broke out with, uh, I don't know who it was, but there was a, you know, there was, he was offended by somebody who said something and, um, you know, a, a, a gauntlet was thrown down and all this stuff. So um, I'm glad we don't do that. Anymore. <laughs> me too. <laughs> but uh, I, I think, um, I don't think it ever really got close to the point where, where pistols were drawn, but... Mm. Uh, but anyway, so that is what happened before the war. Then the war comes on. He um, is a colonel at the beginning because he raises troops. And being mm. the person who raises the troops up, he becomes a colonel. But through his political connections, he's um, brought up to uh, the rank of brigadier general. Mm. But he didn't really know. Actually, I should take that back. He, he had some experience with the Seminole Wars oh, down in Florida. Florida. Mm. Yeah. Oh, so he um, did do something. Well, he was he was kind of one of the people who serviced the general who was actually making making calls. So maybe he would learn something during that time frame, but I don't think he was actually leading troops during that time. Um, hmm. So, but that was the exposure that he had. So really, there wasn't a lot of exposure. So he goes down to New Bern uh, oh, for yeah. one of his first battles in New Bern, North Carolina. Yeah, in New Bern, North Carolina, at the beginning parts of the war. And gets his gets ass his ass kicked, kicked. Yes. <laughs> big time. And you read about this, and they all talk about how how he cr truly messed it up, left a gap in the middle of the line that uh, you know was the demise for everybody in that hmm. in that battle. Um, and then after that happens, he gets relegated um, after a bit of time to be a brigadier general that's underneath A.P. Hill. Now A.P. Hill was a kick-ass general. Hmm. He was um, you know just a a guy that a lot of people respected and he could really whip people into shape and, and get yeah. them moving. And, you know, a lot of, a lot of, um, type of characteristics, but, mm. uh, so during the time that followed LOB mm. and certain battles, the battle of Cedar Mountain, mm. which is out toward where I am, it's in Virginia near Culpeper. And his troops were really the ones who saved that whole, mm. A battle from becoming a complete rout. This is 1863. 60, that would be 63. Oh, no, 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 no. 62. Two. 62. No. 63 was, um, was Gettysburg. Was oh, right. He's dead by 63. Okay. Yeah. So, so he did actually a lot of, his troops did a lot of maneuvering to where they got back to the second Manassas, which is, mm. um, where I live. And, uh, so you can actually see on on the battlefield where his troops were located. Hmm. Um, how many men, how many, how many men would he have commanded at this point? I don't like, know. I don't know. I, I, you know, six people in military would something? know this better. A uh, maybe a couple thousand, maybe. Oh, that, I, I'm, I'm guessing. Hmm. But um, so anyway, so after uh, Manassas, um, you know, second Manassas, the so South came out of that in a good way. Um, they decide that they're going to take the battle to the north. Hmm. And they start heading up north uh, across the um, the Potomac, and then go into Maryland. They try to uh, get people to volunteer to um, become part of the uh, Confederate Army who are in Maryland, and the Marylanders don't want anything to do with them. Yeah, that didn't work so well. Um, so they're they're still heading out toward uh, what they want to do is try and get up to Harrisonburg, uh, Pennsylvania, 
And so they're heading in that direction, and then something happens where the Union troops get a hold of the orders, and so they know what the plan is mm. for the, uh, the Confederates. And so suddenly the, the Union troops that are usually really slow, they quicken their pace and then kind of come to meet at Antietam Battlefield. Is McClellan still here? Yeah, McClellan's he's the one. He's been reinstated. Who's, yeah, yeah, he's gotten reinstated. And, um, hmm. and, and he's actually the one who is um, running the Union troops at Antietam. At Antietam. Huh. And Antietam happens, and there's three different sections of the battle. Um, as I said, it, the way things turn out, uh, Branch and his uh, other troops with L, uh, AP Hill are brought up from. We need to talk about Harper's Ferry a little bit, don't you? Before. So, yeah, so Lee had a plan because Harper's Ferry had an arsenal, hmm. and Harper's Ferry changed. Harper's hands. Ferry was in the in the confederate hands at that point yes well no it, it was in the union hands until they went down and recaptured it okay so it was up to branch and some of the other generals to go down and recapture harper's ferry because otherwise they felt that if they didn't have that under their control then they wouldn't be able to affect make this this jog up mm. toward the the Shenandoah valley how far is harper's ferry from 17 Antietam. miles. Oh, it's not that far. Well, 17 hmm. miles with a I mean, pack on your I know, back. but to walk. I yeah, know. no, 17 miles is what they did, and they left early that morning, and then they arrived, I think, around 1 or 2 o'clock p.m. Hmm. So that's a pretty quick pace. Hmm. Um, and then they went right into battle, and then the they say that he may have been the last mortally wounded person at Antietam because he was hit by a sharpshooter after the battle had actually completely, you know, stopped. In the head. Yeah, in the head. Yep, in the jaw, I think it was. Was he on a horse? Uh, no, I don't think so. I think they were actually standing around talking. The generals were mm. talking. I don't think he was on a horse at the time. Hmm. But, um, because I, I, I always thought that the sharpshooters were would, would try to shoot officers, right? Yeah, but officers learned that they didn't want to be on their horse unless they really mm. had to be because otherwise they were making themselves a target. I see. So... So he gets killed, and um, his poor family is. Um, so he also has a lot of history that predates the war. He used to go. He used to leave his family in North Carolina. He'd go up to Virginia at the Hot Springs and spend two months there because he had some kind of health condition. I don't know what the, the condition was, but he would go up there for the healing waters of the the Hot Springs. Or maybe he just wanted to get away. From yeah, the yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because it was a swinging place, man. All the uh, all the political people would go up there and hang out for a couple months. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. But, um, anyway, that's it. I don't know a whole lot about the other folks. I mean, I'd, I'd like to learn more about Mor Morel, uh, Francis Morel Hoyt. He's the, he has some interesting. Do you have a picture of him? stuff? Well, that's the guy we already talked about. It's this guy. Uh oh. Yeah. Um, the guy who went around Cape uh, Horn. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. awesome. That would be a new thing to That'd be really. I don't know if you could get much information on it, but uh, but you can make something up. <laughs> <laughs> True. Um, let me see. Is there anybody else? Well, the other thing about all these stories is that you don't know if they're really true, you know? Well, I mean, yeah, like you're this right. story, the LLB story is true, you know, it's just, you just don't know. Yeah, you're right. Well, you know, LLB, because he's kind of a prominent guy in history, I mean, there's a lot written about him. So, I mean, there's a fair amount. I, I think that most of what we know about LLB is correct. But I remember... Before I really researched this, I remember hearing that he had gotten shot in the butt. Mm. Not at all the case. Mm. So. And uh, John A. Ramsey, I know John is, in, is Andrew Ramsey is in the audience, and he probably knows more than yeah. both of us. I don't think I don't know if he knows. I don't know. Just go ask him. But I don't think he knows a whole lot about Branch. I think he knows mostly about these Ramsey. He knows a lot about Ramseys. Yeah. I mean, he can tell, he can tell you about the Ramseys. The only thing. Hmm. Okay, we're going to hang up. Thanks, All right. That was cool, Brent. Happy Thanks. travels. Thanks. We'll that see you guys.